<laughs> Do you have an identity? Atom. Was your identity shared with Adam in the beginning? Yeah, Matthew 5.10. God blesses those who persecuted by doing what is right. For the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Is that your identity? Yeah, persecuted for what doing what's right. You're going to look it up. I trust you because there's 40 books in Exodus. Or 40 chapters, not books. 40 <laughs> books <laughs> in Exodus. How quick did you look that up? As soon as I got back to my phone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Somebody else did to me today. What? They're like, oh, they spelled Exodus wrong. I was like, <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. No, they didn't. We know one of what's funny though is the look of concern in your face. Probably that time and in, in the time of war. <laughs> what? No, <laughs> oh, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> and 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 the fact that you didn't have your phone. You know, most friends they'd be like, "Whoa, dude, that's pretty cool." Those Not you. You're like. Those are called f- dude. There's Those only f- there's there's only thirteen <laughs> chapters in Exodus, dude. I'm like, no, there's not. Those yeah. friends that say "whoa, cool" are not your real friends. They just trying to get you to be like, oh, thank you, and move on. Oh, is the fans on still? Oh, the remote's over there. Can you reach it? I turned the fan on for you because, well, I appreciate it. It was nice. The first thing you would have said was, oh, it's hot in here. Dang it. What are you doing? Why did you do this to my chair? What are you doing? It's around the leg. I didn't do that. I don't sit there. Don't fall. I'm not going to fall. Gotta be left ear, right ear. So when you got to your car and you got your phone and you looked up Exodus, I was like, I knew I was right. Were you? What if it? What if it went to thirteen? Then what? What's your next move? Because you really can't get mad at your, the tattoo artist because I supplied the picture. Possibly they didn't know. I supplied the picture. Uh, and I searched the verse before I gave him the picture uh, and you, why I was getting it. You trusted the internet. So the internet <clears throat> no, is No, I didn't your search identity. it on the internet. Somebody made this. And I was like, that is so cool. I'm going to get it tattooed on my body. I'm like, whatever. It's like you should They're like no way I have no tattoos like, okay so I'm you wanted to get God is greater than the highs and the lows how do you know that's what it meant? <laughs> well you research things when nah I don't want to go there <laughs> how'd you know <sighs> did I tell you I think it's really cool and I like your tattoo you liar how do I know? Because every soccer mom in the world has that on the back window of their minivan. Oh, it's not. It God is. is greater than the highs and the lows. But not every soccer mom has Exodus fourteen fourteen. Possibly not. Let that. the Lord fight for you. You need only. Dude, but be you, why did you push so hard? Did I had to tell you where I seen it? And then so I was like, "What is that?" And then I go to Mardell's, and they got stickers. For that and I'm like what is that and somebody said oh that's God or God is greater than the highs and lows oh well, cool and it's I thought someone made it and I was like you're smart good job I like that. well somebody didn't make it obviously and all the ladies loved it and dudes 
Dudes loved it, dude. <laughs> Dudes loved they, it, dude. There's another one that's got that same kind of writing. That it's, it's Greek. He he came, he lived, he died, he ascended, he's coming back. But it's a bunch of arrows and crosses and uh, there's like a tomb on there. Same deal, but it's still cool. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> The look on your wife's face when I said it, she's like, oh, you idiot. (laughs) When you showed her? Yeah. (laughs) She was like, oh, my gosh, you. (sighs) I'm sure she's seen that before. And she smiled. I'm sure she's seen it before. And I was like, what? And then you're like, bro, that's wrong. I'm like, I'm just going to go. I was not even invited to this anyway. (laughs) It's like. Exodus one <laughs> backwards nine one backwards nine. It's a fourteen. I know. I know. Shout out to that tattoo artist. It's my buddy's wife. <laughs> I went to a kid's birthday party on Saturday in the mountains. Second year of birthday. They did that in the mountains. Yeah, in a cabin. In the you're, woods. You're not making this any easier for our listeners. Why? Because you <clears throat> might as well say, well, you know, I was She out. said, she's like, yeah, I don't do face paint at my kids' parties. I give out tattoos for free. <laughs> you're still <laughs> not making this <laughs> Shout easy. Out. Shout out to you guys. You guys are amazing. I love you guys. Beautiful family in the woods. I'm sure they are. You know, I I don't know them, but I'm did you sure. put your iPad on there just to show it off? No, I said it there earlier because it just turned on with yeah, the globe. Man. Yeah, because God is talking to you. That's the that's symbolizing the world. Yeah. The world that we live in, where you go and hang out in the woods and go to a cabin, kids' birthday party, and. Their mom tattoos you. Yeah, dude. Isn't that cool? That's yeah. pretty cool, dude. Not yeah. many people can say that. <laughs> yeah. No, they can't. No, they can't. And they probably won't. <laughs> Just me. Yeah. Yeah. If we make this do 20 years. And, uh, Bro, we're not even at 10. I know, but we get to 20. I'm giving you 20. And then I have to sit here and I'm like, hey, normally to my right is a good friend of mine, Kevin. 20 years ago, he made a decision to get a tattoo <laughs> in a cabin in the woods. <laughs> Much like they do in prison. <laughs> uh he contracted what they thought they had cured called hepatitis. That's, I am prone to that without a spleen. <laughs> and we're going to cut to these clips. In the arms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna, I'm, immune, I'm, I'm, I'm prone to, you know, I my spleen. In the arms. In the arms. And then there'll be another song. Be like Snuff from Slipknot. Just like <laughs> I only wish you weren't my friend. <laughs> then I could hate you, you in the end. You Cut couldn't hate enough to <laughs> love. I don't want to get this video demonetized. They don't care anymore. <sighs> so moment you say that is when they do. Yep, they're gonna and I'm gonna be like the title of the podcast will be Choices. Cabin in the woods. <laughs> yeah, and then I just have a memoriam. Last I'll give you five minutes of the podcast, just your pictures. Yeah, those horrible thumbnails you take. You get put up like an AI AI art picture of yourself and then just a picture of me like this. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, cool. And I couldn't find and her. I'm just like, 
<laughs> I couldn't find your uh, your business picture. Your company. I yeah, the one that it. you put on the refrigerator oh. as a magnet. Melanie put it up there. I didn't mm-hmm. put it there. You told her to. No. <laughs> I was... When Rick said, uh, why, why is that up there? I'm like, what? And then I had to go in there and get coffee to see. But yeah, it'll be something like that. <laughs> that AI illustrate a picture i did like three years ago yeah i know it's you look really young in it yeah there's an app on my phone that would take your picture and make it into an illustration and now they have your facial recognition who gives a crap to plant at any scene and frame for any crime what are they gonna do you're gonna. Well, it's not about what they're gonna do. It's about you having a mi- prison ministry. You prepared for that? Yeah. Has your identity defined you enough? I'm kind of tired right now, so I could I could see sleeping for a while. That's your identity. Sleep. Twenty years. <sighs> Twenty years of sleep. Yeah. Wake up, talk to some skinhead for a while, and go back to sleep. Yeah, your cellmate. I mean, there ain't no cowboy gangs in the prisons, bud. It's the Marion brothers. Aryan. It's the Marion brothers. Who is the Marion brothers? It's the Marion brothers. All right. Saying that, eh? Or it would it's suck. The, if we went to prison, you're going to have to be in the uh, Mexican mafia and I'll have to be in the area. I don't know if they'd take me, dude. My complexion is a little light. Uh, what's the other one? You know, uh, I had someone, though, the other day. He came up to me. He's like, bro, are you Puerto Rican? I was like, no, I'm just Mexican. He's like, dude, okay. I knew you had something. Uh huh. I thought it was Puerto Rican. I was like, what are you? Like, I'm Puerto Rican. I was like, oh, dang. I thought you were an islander, dude. Big dude. Cool dude. His name's Desmond. All right. He's cool. So you be in, uh, what's the other Hispanic gang in prison? Latin Kings. Yeah. No, that one and the other one. Uh, you'll probably be in the Mexican Mafia, though. No, I'll be in the Aryan Brotherhood. No, dude. I think in prison, they stay away from them. Preachers. All right. Did you ever watch the Mike Tyson show? No. He was in prison for a while, uh-huh. and that's when he became when he found became Muslim. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but he was like selling um, paraphernalia mm-hmm. near this mosque, and those guys just. We're in there praying all day long, and then you talk to the guys, and they're like, "Yeah, this is where it's at." And then he became Muslim. Hmm. So they left him alone because he was famous, obviously. And then he was providing them all the stuff that they wanted hmm. in prison. So I think you know those people they were left alone to just worship Allah, Hu Akbar, or whatever. You know? Yeah. Hmm. But then he said when those guys got out, he got hooked up with, uh, I guess, like a cousin or an uncle or something, and they were, they're gangsters. Yeah. They're, they like, show up to a house and be like, hey, um, he doesn't eat pork. <laughs> mm-hmm. So have you ever make him cook you pork again? Wow, it's in that show too. I think it's all dramatized. It was a it was a decent show. I mean, it's weird, but you know, Iron Mike. Yeah, Iron Mike Tyson. He's a crazy man. That's why God blesses those who are persecuted 
that do right. For Is heaven. Talk with bliss. His hands. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what is doing right? <clears throat> I don't know. Because what's right to you might be wrong to somebody else. No, it's not. How do you do right by God's standards? Mm-hmm. There's the real. Oh, yes. Kind of the whole thing. Identity, right? Your identity. God is blesses that. those who are persecuted for doing right. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Mm-hmm. Right by God's standards. What's. Why would you be persecuted for doing what's right by God's standards? Because it goes against what the world wants you to do. Mm. Wisdom of the world. Hmm. That's what we talked about tonight. It was pretty good, actually. I think I really, really got through to them kids. That's good. Yeah, it was nice. And they wanted to listen. Hmm. You know? Yeah. What's right? What's your identity? What's... What does Christ say? Wisdom of the world. What does Christ say? About? What's right? What's right? What's right? What's right? I thought you were about to tell us. No, I'm waiting. Oh. I don't know. What's right? Doing the right thing. Hmm. Well, till (laughs) next time on Street Smart Christian. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. It's a mosquito. What's the right thing? To follow Christ. I'm right. It's not wrong. It's easy as that, then. (laughs) Oh, it's not left. (laughs) You need a buzzer in one of these, dude. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Uh, what's right? I'm not going to answer your question until you answer my question. It's not my question. It's the question in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, no pressure. Uh, what's right? Um, do I need to paint scenarios for you? Because this no. episode is going to get canceled. Have they all? Haven't they all? Yeah, this one definitely is. What's right? Um, hey, Pastor Kevin. How are you doing? Um, you know, <laughs> me and my boyfriends want to come in here. Worship God. He is, uh, you know, he's an awesome God. He loves us all. Me and my boyfriends. Um, Why have so many? Why have multiple? Because God's a loving God. You're a God now? I'm not. God's a loving God. I love God. Can we come in here and worship with you guys? Yes. Okay, cool. Can we bring our... uh, uh, rainbow flags in here? No. Why? Why do you want to bring a rainbow flag in here? Because God's a loving God, and I want to show that we're love. You're, you're... we're not love. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you? It's a, you're talking about yourself. You're not talking. No, about I'm God. talking about my boyfriends and the me. Yeah, you guys. It's a group. You need to die to self. I love everybody, though. Yeah, but your identity is skewed. How? Because you believe in yourself. Why? 
Because you don't believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. He says he died on a cross and was resurrected the next day and came back. He died for my sins and he came back. Three days. But and he loves us all. He does. All right, let me go get my friend. Hey, Pastor (laughs) Kevin. Is there anywhere I can sit where my dress don't hike up too high? Are you... What? <laughs> That's right. Why That's are you wearing right. a dress? Because I'm a girl. Are you, though? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you chose this path. Yeah, keep I, it. I didn't choose this path. You chose it. Hey. It's the right path. I gave this ministry a thousand dollars last month. Are you still in a dress? Not but crap of nothing happened. My life still sucks. You preached last week that if I give to this church, my life would turn around. I didn't say that. My wife left me. <laughs> I didn't say that. My kids don't even want to call me anymore. Yeah. Why'd you do this to me? You want your money back? What's right? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do this to you, brother. You did it to yourself. You told me to do it. I did not. Yeah, you did told you to cheat you on told me the more I give the more I get yes but you can't be giving out of obligation you told me I had to give or I won't get yeah. the more I give the more I get <clears throat> so, yeah but you, you're giving in conditions no you can't put stipulations on you tell me what I can give and what I can't give yeah why are you giving it Because you told me to. Who are you listening to, me or God? You didn't say that from the pulpit on Sunday. I'll say it next Sunday. Yeah, so you're a liar. No. (laughs) What's right? Still not there. Mm -hmm. What's right? What is right? And give you a refund. Uh, you gotta give me more than that, Adam, because none of those are related. That's what happens when you gotta defend what is right. And I'm, I am Christ. You can't just dodge around what I was saying. Did I? Oh, uh, I don't know what you gotta tell you. <laughs> Instead of the homosexual coming up and you making a whole bunch of excuses. I didn't. You said you can worship here. And I said, it's okay if I'm... No. You bring your flags in here. You're not... Here Why? To worship the flag. You're Why? here to worship but Christ. You didn't, give, you didn't say that. Yeah, I did. No, you did. But did you say, hey, man, listen. Um, I love you. I do. I really love you. Um, Christ would be sitting right next to me talking to you right now. However, um, your lifestyle, I don't agree with. The Bible and, doesn't agree and, with. Well, I don't even have to say that right now. I'm just, I don't agree with it. Uh, this church doesn't agree uh, with your lifestyle. Your lifestyle, not your life. Your lifestyle. We would love you to continue to come worship with us. However, if you're going to push your agenda on the congregants of this church, um, display what we quite frankly don't agree with, 
I'm going to have to ask you to leave this church, and I'm going to continue to pray for you. Um, we love you. We really do. We want you to serve here. We really do. Uh, but if you find it's not a good fit, you're not ready to live your life the way the Bible intends all of us to live, and by no means am I a perfect poster child of that because I fall short of the gospel every day. However, we can get through that together, or um, you can continue your lifestyle, and I'm going to pray for you. However, if you want to pray with me right now, we're going to pray. We're going to we're going to ask forgiveness of our sins, but with forgiveness of sins comes repentance, and the word repentance means to turn, turn away. away. So if you can't right now find it in your heart to turn from your lifestyle, and I can't find anywhere to turn from my lifestyle, then we're at a crossroads. And we're going to have to agree to disagree, and I love you, and uh, we'll see what happens. You already said that. Yeah. I, can you say I love you too many times? No. Mm-hmm. And that would go with everybody in that situation. What about the good, the tithing guy? I say, hey man, uh, God loves a cheerful giver, but uh, the tithing laws applied to those in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, there's nothing that says a percentage. Nobody says you have to do this to do that. However, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So when you're comfortable enough in your lifestyle and uh, you like this church and you like what we're doing, if you want to support this ministry, uh, here's the way you can do that. But you told me to give it. No, the other guy told you to give it. I didn't tell you to. You just came here from Kevin's church. <laughs> oh, now those stipulations gonna... don't apply to your church. Oh, if it's that, then... Um, stop coming to this church like I that guy's probably not going to change at all is somebody who's arguing with him I would say listen I don't see anywhere in the uh, New Testament where it says we have to pay a percentage or money's going to buy us out of anything so but that prosperity gospel preacher is not going to be like hey listen sorry it's just regular church. I wonder what they say to them, though. If well, they don't. I mean, if it's if it's a regular <laughs> church, they're passing around a plate, and somebody has an issue with that. And I was that pastor. I would say, listen, you're right. You don't have to give anything. The Lord loves a cheerful giver, but if you don't, if you can't, if it's between this and that's between you and the Lord, you can do business with Him. Whatever He puts on your heart. You do, but if you don't, then I'm not going to treat you any different than the guy that gave ten thousand dollars. We're all here to worship God. I'm not looking at dollar signs, even though you know you got to. I think a lot of these pastors and stuff need to explain to people that this is how uh, the wheels keep turning. This is how the lights stay on. <clears throat> the trash bill gets collected. The heat. The internet, <clears throat> all this stuff. You don't start a church and the government says, here's a billion dollars. I mean, it's the people keep that church going. And I think, and I'm probably going to get cheered down one side and the other for saying this, but as a pastor, I would say, this is how we keep this ball rolling. It's up to us. I don't have a weekly paycheck. This is how this keeps going by your generous donation. However, a lot of pastors are probably right now will listen to this and be like, nah, Exodus or whatever, and all these Just other Old Testament. <clears throat> yeah, there was a 10% ten percent tithe, but the New Testament, there is none of that. I've watched a lot of videos. 
on tithing, but they all agree on the same thing that if you're in the body and you're in the church, you should give what you can to keep that church ministry going. Because if nobody did that at all, then we'd just be meeting in a parking lot talking out loud, which is fine, but... You have a new one. If you want to be in a building, you want the lights to be on, and you want nice things for your kids in the children's church, and you want different deals, then you're going to have to tithe a little bit. That's how these churches are funded. They don't get any grants. They don't. But then that's why you have mega churches because they're bullied into thinking that they have to pay so much to be a member or to be healed or whatever it is. I don't know. Prosperity gospel. Rich. I wish we could fly around on a private jet, but I don't think <laughs> that's going to happen anytime soon. We'll knock down a wall in our house full of money. <laughs> uh, that went to nowhere. That didn't have any repercussions. Why would it? He's, he. That was two years ago now. He's huge. He had money in the walls of his house. He didn't know it was there. He put it there. Somebody did. I wish I had enough money to insulate my walls. <laughs> wish I could just take a hammer and smack the drywall and get a few well, grand. We need to get a new dishwasher. Start smacking these walls. Wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> if you're like, yeah, and you smacked it and like... They come rolls, what? Rolls oh, we up. were just... Uh, Trying to build a skylight. Oh, but what if you did like rolls of hundreds came out? <laughs> like go get some drywall. Or put, fill your pockets, but go get some <laughs> patch and we're going to paint that real quick. <laughs> That's what it means to be persecuted and do what's right. Your family's going to push back against you. Those were actually both really good answers your, that you had, Adam, and I wanted to point that out. <laughs> your inward your inward change is when it starts. You're born again. Your yeah. Inward change. But, but here's the problem. Your outward change needs to reflect your inward change, and when that happens, your family's going to notice it. You used to be one way. I have, a, to be I have fun. a question now for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Are you ready for it? Maybe. I don't know. When you stopped your past life and turned to Christ, did you struggle with the identity of who you were? Every day. And who you're supposed to be? Yeah, every day. I still do. I I think it's... Why do you think that is? Take up your cross and follow me, for they hated me first. They're going to hate you. Um, Jesus knew it right away. Because nobody likes change. When you're the fun Kevin and you're the carefree Kevin, everybody seems to be comfortable with that because nobody can make a lot of mistakes around you because you're making the same mistakes. When you become Christian Kevin, um, nobody seems to really care that much until that inward change becomes an outward change the inward change all day long nobody cares what you're doing in your room by yourself nobody cares what you're doing behind closed doors nobody cares what you're doing on Sunday while they're asleep shadow work but once that inward change becomes an outward change um, I got a video I just did on that yesterday that outward change is what bothers people they don't care about your inward change it's the outward change so you went from fun Kevin that played beer pong and had fun and listened to music with everybody and you partied you went your separate ways you come back together just to party again once that person stops coming to the party 
people start to think, why, why isn't he coming? Well, he found God. Oh, here we go. So then that's the first part. Here we go. Found God. What, did he get in trouble? Did he go to jail? No, he just, you know, he, whatever. Whatever the case may be. Car accident, jail, whatever. Okay, well, okay. Give him a few months. Give him a year. He'll get over that Jesus stuff. Then you don't. Then they go, what, does Kevin think he's better than us? You know, we're still partying. We're still having a good time. Kevin's raising his kid or doing whatever. He didn't even answer the phone no more. You think he's better than us? No, man, he's just on this Christian thing. Well, most Christians think they're better than everybody else. He's probably in one of those weird cults. I don't know, man. Yeah, he's in one of them weird. He's let him go through that. It's a phase. It's a phase. A couple of years go by and they go, man, you know what? I don't even know why I mess with you anymore, man. You, you think you're so good. You judging me. You're not supposed to judge anybody. You're a Christian. You're not supposed to judge anybody. You're a real douche. You know that? <laughs> you can't do that. And you're like, dude, I'm just living my life. I don't. Okay. I don't party with you guys no more. I'm spreading the gospel. I don't want to hear your nonsense. Those are your best friends, right? Those are your good friends. And then your family. Yeah, they're Christians too. But then they spent so much of their Christian walk trying to help you through all this nightmare that you were going through. All this nightmare. Now you're taking the steps to become a Christian. And you're taking a little more serious than they are. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No, son, you don't know. You don't know. You're doing good. You're doing, man, he's really actually pulling his head out of his butt. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I'm trying. No, but son, you know what? Don't you for a second think. Forget. Or forget what you did. And don't forget what you, this, all this mess you left behind. And don't for a second think that you know more of this gospel than I do. You live through me. I don't live through you. Yeah, and the whole thing goes around. And then you get the support that are like, hey, man, no, that's really gr- I'm really happy for you. I'm, I'm glad you're cleaning your act up and doing this. And that. that's really cool. What are you doing? Man? <laughs> oh, man, nothing. You know, you want a beer? No. <laughs> Come on, man. <clears throat> And then you sit there and then you go home and you talk to God and you're like, what the heck? Because in the beginning of your Christian walk, everybody was patting you on the back. Great job, great job, great job. And then they figured out you were serious about it. And they're like, oh, no. You serious? And then you go home and you tell God, you say, wait a minute. This was supposed to make everything better. It's not. Says who? And you sit there and wait for that audible voice that so many pastors and so many of your new Christian friends say, I heard the voice of God today tell me. And you're like, why are you talking to me? Well, because he's not talking to anybody. But then you sit there and you're going, song comes on and your tear comes in your eye. You're like, what the heck? God, this is, and then this, just this piercing light feeling in your heart just goes mm-hmm. and you're like is that God? And I don't know if it is or not or if it's just your body almost trying not to have a heart attack die. <laughs> try not to have a heart attack <laughs> <laughs> so you grab your heart and it's like oh you gave it just a little jolt there but then you just your mind gets clear and, and you're just like and you go to the scriptures and he says, take up your cross and just follow me. For they will hate you because they hated me first. And you're going, wait a minute. This guy that I dedicated my life to, this grown man that I dedicated everything to, that told me those Ten Commandments that Moses presented to you, I'm telling you right now, you cannot even close keep that law. So I'm going to give you two. And everybody's quiet. And they're going, oh, my gosh. What are these two? 
Love the, Love Lord, your Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your heart, your soul, your spirit, everything. And even your neighbor. And then, and then everybody's like, "Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good I one." I do that. I do. What that. about the second? Second, he said, and "The second of these is this." Love your neighbor as you love yourself. And they went, "Get out of here! Get out of here!" But they're gonna throw rocks at your face. I mean, and, 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 and I'm not blaspheming the Bible or nothing. I'm not twisting the words. But I imagine this. They're like, they're going to throw rocks at your face. And he's like, then turn the other way and let them take the other. You got another side of your face. Literally, Jesus is not telling you to take a butt whooping. He's telling you that if they come at you, they came at him and he did nothing wrong. Those guys beat him to death not even one thought went through that man's brain they said if that boy smacks me, forgive them if that boy smacks me one more time <clears throat> i'm gonna dedicate a special spot in hell for this month <laughs> no they're ripping the flesh off of his back for doing nothing because one of his disciples sold him out for 30 pieces of symbol silver and he's sitting there doing that all not having one ill thought go through his head not mur one murderous thought go through his head so that me and you can sit here and somebody cuts us in line and we want to take their life <laughs> They didn't even brush up against our shoulder, but they cut in front of us to get a Pepsi before us. And we're like, I hope that guy's whole family dies in a car accident. <laughs> and we're sitting here having a conversation about what is right. All he wrote in Matthew was, God blesses those who are persecuted for doing what is right. So when you're standing up in your high school or your job or your home and you're telling, let's just put it in this scenario. Let's go back to high school. And you're in your parking lot with all your buddies. You just got out of school. And everybody's four letter word and everything. Yakety yakety yak. And you're like, hey guys, we really got to do that. Can we maybe clean the language up a little bit? And they call you every four letter word in the book. What is right? Walk away from them. Simply put. But is it simply? No. You, you go home. And your significant other is just getting blackout drunk on the couch. That used to be me. I mean, I mean, I'm putting myself in that situation and that person goes, hey, I think you had enough. You may maybe need some help or put it down. And they scream at you and tell you what to think. And so you go to the liquor store and get them at 12. What, what is right? God is saying to us just in that simple Matthew 5 verse 10 can sum up so much of our Christian walk. Yeah. I was walking down the dirt road doing this video on this and I thought now nah, it's quick because I just flipped through scriptures and what I guess the Holy Spirit led my finger to that one and then I driving to work I'm like what is right that's it I didn't think about the persecution. The kingdom of heaven is ours. What is right? And so many times we are presented with what is right and we ignore it. Yeah. Just at work today, and I don't know about your job, but in my job, things are said. And I just shake it off like, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not right. You don't disassociate with it. You just uh, not even that. I don't even stand up, and I'm not even saying that Christ is telling you that if somebody says a curse word, you're supposed to say, "Hey, don't do that." But 
you should live a life so humbled and Christ-like that people don't even want to cuss around you. And when they do, they're persecuted. Or when you stand up for what is right and they persecute you and you walk away, that leaves a mark. Maybe even plants a seed. Mm -hmm. But what is right? Deep. That's pretty deep. It's pretty good. I feel like Matthew McConaughey right now. (laughs) (laughs) What what is that? (laughs) But that has been going through my head this entire week. What is right? All right, all right, all right. I didn't try to sound like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> what is right? Right just always sounds like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> but what is what is right? Yeah, that's a that is a hard question. Raising your kids, what's right? Raising them right. Going to your job, what is right? Doing your job. How do you do right sometimes and not right the rest of the time? Mm-hmm. If you're working for Christ, you better be right all the time. We talked about the end times in Bible study last night. And basically, Rick said, and I'll say it for this podcast because we're a bunch of rebels. Just don't be caught sitting on your ass. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, is that real? And that's the audience we're trying to reach. Yeah. Because when Jesus comes back, if he came back in five minutes, five seconds right now, are you sitting on your butt? He went into Bethlehem on a donkey. That's not how he's coming back. Oh. But <laughs> Just he's saying. coming back on Switch a cloud, and he's going to put his foot. He's coming back to the Mount of Olives, and when he puts his foot on the ground, look out, buddy. We better, Me and you better be gone. Because if we're not, and he puts his foot on that ground, it's not going to be good. Well, hell Because this, no, this entire earth is going to burn up. Mm-hmm. There's going to be no clear blue sky in the Rocky Mountains. It's not going to be ash. And yeah, Pike's Peak will be in the ocean. Uh, I don't know. We didn't read that part in Revelation, but, but you want to know what's crazy? The United States is the West. Where is the West in the Bible? You got the North, China, the South, and the East. China. China is not in the West. (laughs) The North, the South, (laughs) and the East. Where's the West in that Bible? Why don't you go home in the next week's podcast? Tell me where the West is. In the Bible? Yeah. It's Europe. The North, the South, and the West. What is considered the West on the globe? America. Thank you. Thank you. North America. (laughs) Maybe South America. I don't want to racially profile that, but (laughs) I'm pretty sure it's all the Americas is the West. Western Hemisphere. It's not in the Bible. Mm -mm. Daniel had a dream. The North, the South, the East. Where's the West when this great tribulation, nation, a nation, and kingdom falls? is no west so last night they were like that's because the United States is crumbling right now so when this happens the west won't be a threat to anybody this great part of the tribulation the west is there's no west and now we see the United States going from the great empire it was to now, which is still a great empire, but it's really not on the upward slope. <clears throat> so maybe not in our lifetime, but in the trajectory that it's going. 
They build a temple in Israel. There's no west, the north, the south, and the east go to war. Nations will fall and kingdoms will crumble. Just the north, the south, and the east? There's no west. The Bible never says west. Nebuchadnezzar never had a... Oh, you know what? Way back then. <laughs> There's going to be this American people in the west. Nope. There was no west. It wasn't even thought of then. It got brought up later on in life, but it's not in the <coughs> biblical and it's not in the tribulation. So why should it exist when Jesus comes back? That's a good point. Bam. And that's why Kaylee's mind is scrambled right now going on read Revelations. I feel bad. She's going to read that whole book and go, ah, where's the West? You can read Daniel and know that. There's no West. Nebuchadnezzar never saw West. Daniel had a dream about all the nations being beasts. There was no West. There's no bald eagle in that. <laughs> no, there's a grizzly dragon. Yeah. A goat. There's a goat? Yeah, with a horn coming out of the middle of his head. A bear, a dragon, and a goat. Belteshazzar. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Yep. I am actually reading that right now. Do not talk down of the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were, that's, that's when Nebuchadnezzar was like, I'm starting to become a believer. Yeah, let's start and I'm like, fire, you're bro. now starting to become a believer? <laughs> they <laughs> walked out, and you seen their angel walking them out of there, and you're like, it's like there wasn't a fourth there guy. There might be something. There might be something. We to didn't this. put a fourth guy in there. It wasn't until he started going like, I'm having these crazy dreams, Daniel. What's going on, Daniel? And then even his son, Nebuchadnezzar's son. It was his grandson. It wasn't his son. Oh. His grandson, also his name was Belteshazzar. Saw the handwriting of God on the wall. Laughed and had a party called for Daniel. Daniel said, it said you're going to die. <laughs> he said, no, it's not. <clears throat> Dead. Here comes the next king. Daniel's like nine billion years old at this point. Yeah, and he's like the third most powerful. Yeah, and then he's like, ruler. Daniel, what's going on with this? Well, this is my dreams. Okay, good, good, good. Uh, oh, I have to throw you in the lion's den because these guys don't like you. I'm 87 years old. <laughs> these guys don't like you. I like you. But you know these guys. Let me throw you in there real quick. Throws them in there. Close his lion's mouth. Then the guys come back. He didn't die. <gasps> Thank God he didn't die. I like him. He's my buddy. <laughs> You're not dead? No, I'm not dead. Hooray! I'm a believer in your God now. So he already converted two, three atheists that worship multiple gods. Now they yeah, worship a new god. Yeah. Pagans, atheists. Tomato, tomato. Mm, atheists don't believe in anything. Either way. I uh, went on and, and then I kind of, I had to turn it off during the 70 weeks, which is Basically, the seven years tribulation prophecy. Oh, well, that's old school. What are they? Uh, <coughs> saints. All them old prophet or them Old Testament saints are in one of the levels of hell, but they're not in hell, but they got to wait for Jesus to come back. I'm like, what? That sucks. I don't know what that is. Uh, it's. There's three levels to hell, and uh, we'll get into that next time. But Dante's Inferno. No, seven. No, that hell. wasn't. That was just a dude who wrote a book about it. Um, seven levels. Nah, I wouldn't hell. look into that book. There's three levels. It's in Revelation. Either way, you know what, guys? What is right? Do what's right. Act out what is right. 
And find most, your identity in Christ. Okay, back to the identity thing. Find that. We'll talk about more of that next <laughs> week. Do but what's right. Do what's right. And if you're going to talk about it, be a man.